Welcome back to Let's Play Neverwinter Nights 2, Mask of the Betrayer. This is Big Los, and we are in the Emil Vale. We went back to Mulsatir to pick up Gan because he has a lot of dialogue here. So let's talk to these witches. Do you linger here with a purpose? I'm looking for the woodman. Ha! You'll forgive us if we don't draw you a map. Of course, what Tamlin suggests would be difficult regardless. His presence in the wood has been declining, you see, since the last time he was paid a visit by one of your breed. If the woodman is in decline, how come the forest is attacking the garrison there? Hmm. If that's true, then it wouldn't be his doing. Whose then? How to put this simply, the woodman is an embodiment of the spirit of Ashenwood. But he is not all there is to it. Those woods are primal. They have instincts. If he is absent, who knows what other aspects might rise up and fill the void. I have other questions for you. What do you wish to know? I was hoping you might know why the Ashenwood is attacking one of your garrisons. I think we asked this already. Yeah, if that's true, then it wouldn't be the Woodman's doing. He and the Hathrens have an accord. I have other questions for you. What's that gigantic rock over there? The Moss Stone, it's called. Nothing special about the rock itself, but it's said that those who sleep in its shadow experience fanciful dreams, prophetic some claim. Very few who take interest in it, save the odd pilgrim or tourist who comes this way, but some swear by it in return often. I have other questions for you. What do you wish to know? Norlthorn sent me here. I'm supposed to petition a god to remove a blight in Ashenwood. It must be some blight to come all this way, but he has steered you correctly. Our tree is strongly attuned to the spiritual and the divine. It is a conduit of sorts. Words spoken at its base may reach ears across the plains. That is, if you have their attention. So, how do I petition? Have you anointed yourself? How do I do that? Use the anointing solution you assemble, assuming you have it. Sprinkle it on your forehead. If its makeup is to your god's liking, you will have his ear. What do I do after I've done that? Then it is simply a matter of touching the trunk of the red tree and begging favor. Know that the gods listen only to those who are respectful and whose plight they deem worthy of their attention. They have no time for trifling matters or rude petitioners. I have other questions for you. What do you wish to know? What can you tell me about Nadaj and Delenka? I found Nadaj to be very bright. Didn't you? Yes, precocious without question. We only met her the one time during her trials, but she did impress. She'll go far, I think. It surprised me when I heard they'd station her with Delenka. Such different personalities, but I suppose there is a lot Nadaj could learn from her. What do you mean by they have different personalities? Nadaj excelled in her military trials. She was hasty, yet her strategy was always sound. Brilliant at times. Ultimately, though, her success is dangerous. She has not learnt the wisdom of caution, which is a quality Delenka possesses in excess. Tell me more about Delenka. Delenka is very wise, and her judgment has always been impeccable. She is not well liked among her sisters. But it is only because she has a reputation for being prickly and bookish. If she'd been one to play politics, she could be pulling the strings of the Iron Lord in Emilmar instead of standing post at a garrison that hasn't seen real action since the last time Thay invaded. If she has a fault, it is that she is too quick to second-guess herself and thus slower to act than she would need be. If you ask me, she's at that outpost because she's afraid of failure. Alright, farewell. And now we're going to go get this anointing solution, and we're going to double click on it, we're going to use it on ourselves. So if we've used the anointing solution, now all, all we have to do is touch the red tree. We stand before the red tree that Narlthorn spoke of, it emanates an unmistakable energy. So let's place our hand on the tree. What do you pray? Okay, so you can pray to either Shantia or Maylar here. Shantia, great mother of the land, divine warden of all that grows, know that the Ashenwood is stricken with a powerful blight. Grant me your blessing that I might reverse the damage it has wrought. 
A sudden flood of warmth embraces your body, and you feel for an instant as if the ground had been taken out from beneath you, and you are floating in a place removed from time or space as you know them. The pangs of spirit hunger recede, and you know relief for the first time since you awoke in the Barrow Cavern. Wherever you are, you suffer no longer. At once, the world rushes back in to fill the void, and you are at the tree once more. Your hunger remains. Nothing has changed save that in your hand, you now hold an extraordinary crystal bottle. Your prayer has been answered, and we get the blessed salve of the Earth Mother, we get 1500 XP, and we get one point towards the good, and this is the salve. Shantia granted you this powerful bomb when you prayed at the Red Tree. It may counteract the blight that has infected Ashenwood. All right, but that's not all there is to do here. Let's go take so. out the rest of these wyverns scattered about Time this place. The game. Make it a little bit safer. Yeah. And then we're going to go to yeah. the moss stone and then we're gonna have a rest and then go into a dream. That's why we brought Gan along. Yeah. I should have figured that when we were back in Molson's here last time. In case you haven't noticed, I replaced Gan with Kaylin. Because she doesn't really have a lot of dialogue here. Okay, this is the Moss Stone. And we also gotta take care of that boar too. That ice hag. Now, when I went from this place to Mulsatir, when I got there, my spirit energy was real low, so we went to the Shadow Plane and did eternal rest on quite a few spirits in order to get it back up to 100%. Then I switched in Gan, and then we came back here. And Gan leveled up, and then we got a bunch of essences. So you know what? Let's give all the essences that we have so far that can be combined to Sophia. That would include this, these spirit essences, and then we'll level up again. Do we have any others? I guess we don't. Come this way. Well, I guess now would be a good time to combine essences, since we sure do have a lot of volatile ones. I think we would be better served by converting them to. Brilliant essences and the brilliant ones that we have would be better served converted to pristine essence essences. All right, so let's handle that. And this might actually take a minute or two. In fact, we might have to put some of these essences to the other page in our inventory in order to be able to... There we go. In order to be able to combine them. And I think we got a couple more here. Yeah, and we also have one that's 21 over there, so let's... Why don't we... yeah, let's convert those. And I guess we'll give those back to the captain. Alright, that should be it for right now. I guess we'll give all the excess spirit essences we have back to the captain as well. Yes. Alright, so let's level up Gan. Hopefully we'll be able to swap a spell out. However, I'm getting kind of worried. Okay, it recommends for two of his feats. He gets two feats. Great charisma, which will increase his charisma. Yeah, it's not letting me swap out spells. Now, if this were real D&D, &D, you could just say, well, I'm going to swap out spells, and the DM would be like, oh, go ahead, go for it. But if you're not adding any spells, and 
I guess past a certain point, you're not going to be adding any more spells. I believe so. Then it won't let you swap spells either, and I think that's a huge mistake. That's not just a bug, that's well, like something worse you. than a bug. Okay, so here's the Moss Stone. This stone is ancient, carved with weathered runes from centuries past. Flowing wild like waters, the markings seem suggestive of memories or dreams. Ah, look at this. So you won't get this dialogue if you don't have Gan. Perhaps a marker. Perhaps a fragment of dream left behind. This stone is a signpost. Beneath its shadow, we may find that our dreams are sharpened like a blade and ring more true than steel. What do you mean? In such places as these, dreams are strong. As long as one rides the current and does not fight it, we may find ourselves at our intended destination. So we sleep here and we dream? Yes. At least that is the intent. If we rest close to the stone, then the dreams will come and enforce. Of course, this may all be old wives' tales, but I think old wives were young, truthful women once. So perhaps this would be a place to camp for a time and see what lies behind our eyes, no? Why, yes. Okay, so let's rest. And then when you rest, it doesn't ask you if you want to rest for eight hours, it just transfers you here. Snow glitters under a brilliant sun, trackless and white, impossibly so. The trees seem to hold their breath and you hear nothing. It is as if you have intruded upon a forest in an impossibly distant past, before any living creature walked the world, when the gods themselves were strangers to snow and sky and land. We are in Ashenwood, a version of the woods that once were. Something is wrong here. Be on your guard. This looks to be an interesting dream. Let us explore for a bit, but be careful. What are you doing here? Dreamwalking is a gift of blood and skill, and is but one of my many abilities, Captain. Do not let my presence trouble you. Let us see what this dream holds instead. Alright, and there really isn't a lot to do here. All you can really do is go around this circular path until you get to a clearing and then you will see a group of people and there they are all right and when you get close enough they'll talk <laughs> someone walks in our lady's garden stay back we found her she is ours she is all we have and you cannot take her away careful. These four mean us harm. How did you find your way to this place? Tell us. I closed my eyes and went to sleep. How else does one enter a dream? Is it true? Does he dream us, or do we dream him? And each other? Be quiet. He is another bearer of the gift, nothing more. They arise, one after another, blazing bright and guttering out. They hunger, gorge, and are gone. But we remain. We have her for an anchor. You seem familiar. Who are you? We are the echoes of those who once bore the hunger. The gift. The gift. That is what the Uthraki called my affliction. We worship the gift. And the shape-shifting apes worshipped us in turn. They promised to keep our lore when we were gone. I taught them secrets to pass on to those who deserve them. I told them how the gift can de devour living souls. You were spirit eaters like me. Not like you. We worshipped the gift and passed it amongst ourselves, each reveling in hunger for his allotted time, and then slain by his successor. Sweet Jiraj was the first, gorging on the spirits of the wood, turning verdant green to withered black, until her time had passed. Then Kossack crushed her skull, and the gift passed to him. Poor Kossack hunkered only briefly. He tried to devour a great tree spirit, but it fell on him and cracked his spine. And what about you? Did I know the hunger? Oh, yes. I sought to drink more deeply than any. I cast about for a soul that was vast enough to truly quench my hunger. My eyes turned always back to the forest. Go on. I called upon a guide, 
a warden of the wood, who knew the secret trails to the woodman's grove, and he guided me true. If you have walked under the eaves of the great forest, you have touched the woodman's essence. Every creature that dies in his domain, every corpse that molders under rock or silent eave, is joined to him. To drink of such a spirit, to gorge on the soul of the living forest, is to embrace the gift as no one else. And for a time, even our hunger would be sated. Then devouring the woodman would offer me a reprieve? For a time, yes. Some might use such a reprieve to strengthen their wills. But most would seek vainly for a cure. Many would counsel you thus. The witches of this land, for instance, they would send you on fool's errands, seeking after a cure that they do not believe you will find. Ah, have I struck a true note? The Red Woman. I have seen her before, in a waking dream. No. Whatever you saw was merely a reflection. There were many like her once before the hunger took them all. Many facets of a single dream, a single memory, now lost. Only she remains because she was always the strongest. Her garden, our garden, grew firm and strong around her. Please, don't take her away. Don't cast us adrift. We cannot bear it again. You are lost, suffering. I can help you escape this dream if you let me. That gives us three points towards the good. Can you protect our lady from the hunger? From the faceless man? The Red Woman is our anchor stone. All the others are lost and gone. Except perhaps the boy and the wall. Always the wall. Secrecy and silence are her protections. We do not need your ministrations, Dreamwalker. You will leave this place before the hunger follows you here and swallows her up. And then they attack. Now we want to attack this girl here. She's a spellcaster. And we were able to take her out quite easily. This woman is unmistakably an arcane spellcaster. Her posture shrunk at your approach like an animal on the defensive. You clearly present some sort of threat to her. And that was Juraj, and we killed her. And now this is Evoy. Thin and twitchy, this man is clearly on edge, and you get the sense that this is always how he is. The array of daggers and vials he carries on his person suggests that in life, he had made his living in an unsavory fashion. Alright, so he's gonna be next. And now he's dead, and this guy is Zarak. This man's relative age and the manner in which he carries himself suggests that he is the leader of his group. The look in his eyes is devoid of compassion, something more befitting of the walking dead than a walking memory. So, let's try to get his HP down, but it looks like he healed himself. Oh great, now he made himself ethereal. Alright, let's attack this other guy. Let's look at him. There is a certain violence with which this opposing man moves and holds his weapon. His weight is always forward on his toes, as though ready to spring forward and lash out. His name is Kozik. He's the one who had his spine broken. And he crushed the skull of Juraj to gain the hunger. And now we gotta take care of this guy somehow. He's gotta lose his ethereal-ness sooner or later. I guess we could probably hasten this by casting Dispel Magic on him. Let's move over here and then we'll try to cast a spell and see if it works. The captain is unable to to attack him while he's still ethereal. Let's see, I don't know if that worked. Okay, when he does something offensive then he becomes not ethereal anymore. Now he dies. I waited for you. I feared you would not find me before, before the hunger took me. And this is the Red Woman. She speaks, as if an echo, across a great distance, and a familiar one. But... Let's see... The boy told me to find you. He said that you possessed a mask, something that might help to end my hunger. Now, nah, let's do the third one. Why was I drawn here, to you? You have dreamed deep, drifted to me by chance, perhaps, or been drawn by an, an instinct deeper than conscious thought. It matters little, and our time together is short. The mask fragment contains my essence, all that I am. I have saved it for you. 
kept it hidden in this remote and forgotten place. Another mask fragment. These are important indeed, and are taking on a greater significance. It is your choice to take it or not, but you best decide quickly. Well, of course we're going to take it. We will not see one another again, not until you must draw on the memory of what once was. Know that I will be safe while the mask is in your hands. Until I need you? What will that be? The red woman speaks, but you cannot hear her words. The dream is already fading, the brilliant sun glowing dim, the red woman and her garden dissolving into an indistinct haze. Your eyelids flutter open, and you wake. Alright, so that's about it for that dream sequence. So here we are, back in the Emil Vale. We haven't really rested, but we lost all our buffs for some reason. I guess when you go into the dream and come back, you lose your buffs. So we're going to have Sophia... Actually, let's have Oku lead us into this cave, because he still has haste on while the captain and Gan do not. Actually, I think Gan might have had haste before, but I think it got dispelled. But the captain, he didn't. There are many of my kind, my mother's kind. They are numerous in hue and power as the elements, and their disposition as varied as the emotions and rages of a human mind. So we're facing a hag. Well, yeah. The one within, her spirit lies upon the cold edge of ice, I suspect. A heart of winter beats within her chest. A dangerous thing, indeed. This creature, this boor, they thrive in the cold. And they use it as a weapon. Anything that shields us against the winter's chill would help us in the battle to come if we chose to fight. Her kind are also vulnerable to weapons of the sky. Thunder and lightning are twin blades they fear. Acid, bubbling from the earth, also scalds them greater than most. What do you mean if... We choose to fight. Isn't she hostile? As you may have noticed from my own tendencies, we hags, even half-hags, are a talkative people. It is a form of self-flattery to go on about oneself, no matter what the subject. And from what I know of women of my kind, they tend to prattle on more than most. Alright. Well, if that's all I need to know, let's deal with her. Okay, so... I guess we can talk to her and see what's going on rather than kill her like the witches want. Maybe she can come up with a better deal for us. Now, if you bring up the map, you can see that there are five spirits in here that the captain can see. So we've turned party AI mode off. There's a trap here, but here's an Orglash that is definitely hostile. So we're going to attack it, and since our spirit energy is about half, we're in stage one of the sickness. We are going to devour its spirit. And since we did get it down pretty low, we're just going to use the finger bones until we get it to near death. Now, it will increase our craving, unfortunately, but it will be necessary to get it up to a better acceptable level. Now, 84 is pretty decent. And if we consume another one, then we should be quite good. Alright. So we get a brilliant spirit essence. And now, let us pick up this. Yes. You know what? Let's have Sophia pick this up. I believe so. All right, and now let's examine this trap. Give us a good sense of the DC. The DC is 15. It's an epic frost trap, so I think we got a good chance to recover it, so we will make an attempt. And we got it, and then it says it's a successful lore skill check on an unknown item. We get 110 XP, and now we got another short sword with a question mark. What's up with that? See, we can equip it, and it doesn't show that we're equipped with an item. And now if we go over here, it looks like there's some rocks that we can actually unlock. They're doors, it seems. So after we unlock it, we open it up, and here's a treasure chest. 
So let's unlock this treasure chest and see if there's something interesting in here. We get 105 XP for unlocking that, and then we get a long sword plus one. I guess we'll just sell that. And then we got another rock face that could be unlocked. I guess yes. we tend to get stuck here. Step with me. Come on. Follow along. So let's do it again. All right, we did it. Let's open it. And we'll unlock this treasure chest. Someone has woven spirits of elemental cold into the very walls of this place. And then we get a plus three warhammer. I guess we'll sell that one as well. And then here is another... What? What just happened? What am I looking at? Am I stuck? Hmm? Okay, if I click on someone else... Okay, the I captain's free. So. Well, that was kind of weird. Alright, I guess we'll go back and try to... See, he just keeps getting stuck on it. Okay, you gotta approach it from the middle. And then you can unlock it. Alright. And now we're gonna put on search mode because this chest is not locked, but it is trapped. So, let's examine this trap. Give us a sense of the DC. Okay, now the DC is 28, so I think we would probably be better off disarming it. And we failed. We missed the DC by one point, so let's attempt it once more. Alright, so we got 175 XP for disarming it, and we get the Gnarl Thorns Sacrifice Bracers. Let's check these out. Gives you plus 4 to AC, gives you immunity to level drain and ability drain, and they let you do heal once per day. And looks like it was something that came off of Gnarl Thorn when the Thans try to invade. So how are we going to deal with this hag? Find out next time. This is Big Los signing off. Thanks for watching and Tango Windia.